I'm hedging my bets because for the vast majority of working class, it's just they even if they do know it's just, about it's trans people. You say there's a trans genocide happening and you're talking to Joe the carpenter down the street. No, I'm not. The guy's going to say, what are you talking about? There's no trans I'm not a blue-haired SJW you. with my thick-rimmed glasses wobbling up to people and saying, there's a trans genocide and screaming at the top of my lungs. No, I'm not doing that. All right, how are you doing, sir? Uh, chat, yeah, please, in, please inform me, by the way, chat, if it's not loud enough, but I think he's good. Um, sorry, say that one more time. How are you doing? No, I'm, I'm excellent. <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, so, in pursuit of knowledge, uh, give us, uh, do you want me to call you that, or do you want me to call no, you something call else? Dorian. <laughs> Dorian? Call me Dorian? Excellent. Yeah. Okay, that's much easier. And then also your pronouns. Yeah, uh, he, him. All right, excellent. So, Dorian, uh, we were, the reason you're here is uh, we were going back and forth on Twitter a little bit. I vaguely remember what it was about. Uh, to be honest, a lot's been a blur lately, so you'll have to remind me. Um, yeah. Did, were, we, were we having a disagreement or more of like a discussion? I, I don't even... I remember it was loosely about how to communicate with conservatives about trans people, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the overall... Just like how Twitter really destroys any real discourse. Uh, the real topic was the degrees of difference that we should say the word genocide was the first like place that we i think first started talking mm -hmm. and then later on that was like before thanksgiving and then afterwards uh yesterday or day before yesterday we i talked about how maybe we need to actually tone down the word genocide maybe instead we need to really try to understand what is a good way to convince people who are fence sitters albeit uh, but fence-sitters, centrists, conservatives, whatever you want to say, um, how best we can talk to those people, because I don't know if it's really important to talk to just the people that are on our side. Um, that was a, the other topic um, that we talked about. But yeah. Okay. Um, I hear where you're coming from. First of all, first and foremost, I want to get this out of the way. Do you believe that there is an ongoing genocide on trans people? Um with the definition that I see with the stages of genocide from the Holocaust Museum, no. Uh, I'm okay. So, it, it, in any sort of sense besides the stages you see from the Holocaust Museum, um, so like would you would you personally <laughs> use that word to describe what's going on with trans people with the trans community? I would say that there is some legislation in some states that are some policies that are trying to be enacted by conservatives uh, that will target and dehumanize trans people, which is a huge problem. But I don't think in the United States, as in a, on a federal level, especially, number one, number two, uh, we're not, their policy is not really happening. And then number two, I don't think that it, the new, <laughs> I know, I know this is a nasty word probably for your audience, I know. But the nuance of trying to understand what a genocide is and how it's being enacted, especially when we look at history, I don't think we can really compare it to what we are right now. Yeah. See the nuance? I'm already seeing Lady Rain here. Yeah. I mean, I know. I, I, I know. I don't know. He, she, her, or whatever. I don't know. Who Lady Rain are, Cloud goes by she, her. Um, gotcha. I don't know if she, I understand she doesn't like nuance. That's fine. That's, that's you. That's fine. Uh, but I guess what I wanted to kind of talk about was what do we say to the people who aren't terminally online, who aren't on Twitter, who are just casual observers, I uh, think the centrists, the conservatives. That's I, that's who I target. I think. OK, but but you're not really you're not really, it, it seems, convinced that there is an ongoing genocide against trans people. And I think that's where we need to even start. Before we even get into the nitty gritty of like, well, should we use the word genocide? Which, for the record, with centrists and the like, if we're like really trying to convince people, they would first have to understand everything else that's going on with with what it, what it even means to be trans. I feel like a lot of people don't even know what that is, and then they hear about it, and then they think it's some kind of sexual thing. So that would need to be explained first. I don't even think you would get to that part. Now, if they're trying... No, I mean, I, like, users today understand what trans means. I mean, I don't think that it just means a sexual thing. I think they understand that are, there are people that are changing their sex from one sex to another. I think 
Right. I, I would say that the casual observer would agree with that. I, I think I think the casual observer, I, I think the casual observer is a little bit. I don't. I don't want to say dumb, but like you know, unaware of of everything that is actually going on, and so. It is important how we pick our words, but first, and like I said, first I want to tackle the whole issue of, is this a genocide? Because personally, I do believe that it is, and I, I think it's silly to say that it's not, because at what point would you call it a genocide? When there's policy, yeah, especially at stage seven, uh, when there's preparation, that's when I would say there's a trans genocide. I think Wait, why stage seven? Answer. Stage, I mean, stage one cancer is cancer. Why do we? Well, have no, to wait I, un- I understand, but you're talking about a biological, you know, set definition, uh, right? But when we're talking about stage seven and the ten stages of, uh, do you have? Do you want me to send you the link uh, to the information? Yes, please do. Actually, because I was just going to look that up. Yeah, here you go. I know I what you're talking about. Chat or in the uh, the uh, chat's fine. Uh, yeah. Um, but, so the first six stages of genocide really are a way to dehumanize, destroy, classify, uh, and then organize and polarize. I think that's really uh, stage five and six is like where things get really scary and really hairy because the first four stages, I could really argue that, you know, have you ever called a conservative a, I don't know, someone, something that's not human? Like, I don't know, a ghoul? Yes. Like, you know, I hear like, Hassan, he says conservatives are ghouls and pigs and cops are pigs and stuff. Oh, yeah. I, so, call I them mean, I would say easily that's – you say what? I call them subhuman pieces of shit. Yeah, exactly. So I think the first four stages is just uh, how we as humans, you know, we okay, love but I call to- them, But I call them subhuman pieces of shit because they think that other people are subhuman. They're I understand othering that, but you're still of- saying that they're – so- that the fact that they're othering – doesn't really give you an excuse to otherwise. Oh, it absolutely well. gives me an excuse. 1000%. Okay, and you I will do, do it again and want. again. I'm just telling you that that's also someone could argue that the first four stages is something that we as humans, you include you, you yourself included, do uh, as a way to otherize the people who are against you. And that's actually a very normal okay, but, human but, thing but, to do. But but let me stop you because they're they only perceive queer people and queer allies as being against them out of bigotry out of yeah, this out of vague se- hold on out of this vague sense of like they're doing sexual things to our kids usually what it starts as is people see things that they that are different from what they're used to and they don't like it and then they decide to other those people and then they find excuses as to why those people should be othered usually uh it goes down a a rabbit hole of of worse and worse and worse accusations and now we're at the stage of groomer which by the way was a common thing that uh you know they the nazis used in world war ii against jewish people so i so if if we're not in the midst of a genocide i don't know at what point you would consider us to be well like i well i that's what i'm saying is that we're not at stage seven you know we're we're seeing glimpses of the first six stages for sure there's no doubt about that, but we're not at stage seven. And stage seven is when I think that that's when we're at a trans genocide. That's when we can say, "Hey, there's no, you know, no more. We're just kind of doing." You this can kind split of thing, hairs. I'm you not splitting split- hairs. No, yes, no. You, you asked me a question. I'm very, very strict on this. This is not splitting hairs. I mean, you're talking about yourself. Look, I mean, all right here, you know, I got Lady Rain's calling me a shit lip. She's otherizing me. She's dehumanizing me because she doesn't like you know how i think or with the words coming out of my mouth even though she has no idea who i am fuck you dude yeah that's fine I, you can say that that's fine you can otherize you can classify me into a group that you hate uh that's stage one um you can tell me you can polarize people you know that's stage six that, those things are happening with trans people i completely agree with you but i do not believe we're at stage seven the preparations are not being laid out to have a final solution to a tr- to trans they're, people. They're absolutely now, being laid out. Are they being enacted? Uh, sometimes, I mean, yeah. I mean, they tried in Utah already to uh, com- like once you start. They to, tried. That, what, I understand. Hold on. Which legislation what, are you talking about? Well, I was talking about the anti-sports uh, legislation that would effectively make it so that it's illegal to participate in sports if you're trans. But what I'm 
saying is that genocide is the removal of of a a group's identity from the public by whatever means that that entails so with uh with racial or ethnic groups that's usually by means of mass exportation or uh or like directly killing them both are considered genocide um, trans with people trans and gay people, they do not, hold on, they're not a hold ethnic on. group, right? With trans and gay people, you can still commit genocide by forcing them back into the closet. You are forcing them out of the public. You are saying it is illegal to be trans. It's illegal to be gay. It is illegal to be in the United States and be trans or gay. I'm not saying that's illegal yet, but look at Texas. What are they doing? They're about to enact a law that would effectively make it illegal to be trans in public. That's awful. And also like very... Uh, indicative of genocide. That absolutely, I I completely agree with you. We should always fight ba- back. And but they're doing people, that. That humans, is a that is legislation equal. that could pass. So what I'm saying is that yeah, that calling, could is the very 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 important verb there, right? No, it's not because calling something a genocide is useful right now. Calling it a genocide right now is useful to us to help us understand what is happening, what's going on. If you're telling people, well, it's not a genocide yet, it's not, it doesn't carry the same impact. So we only use definitions as far as they can be useful. So, okay. So who are you talking about when we're, who, who do you think you're trying to talk to when you imagine, I need to tell people they're a transgenocide. Do you, are you trying to convince someone like me who already, you know, already have looked into this, already have made my opinion, uh, and, uh, you know, I have come to my conclusion. When are I you, say, when you say these things, when are I you say, to how are, who are you speaking to? Who's your audience? What my audience is right here in the chat. When I use the word genocide, I'm okay. trying to explain the the seriousness of the situation, so that the people that are close to me, the people I care about, can understand what's going on and take steps to prepare for it. When I'm trying to convince people who are fence sitters, or even God forbid, people who are conservatives, no, I don't use the word genocide because we're not even at that point usually. Usually, yeah, that, it what, starts. That's what I wanted to have the discussion on, right? I want to have the discussion. But you don't even believe there's a genocide happening, so you wouldn't use that would, term yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah. Okay, then I don't care about the discussion with you because we don't even agree on that. So why would okay, I have that discussion so with you? Are you saying that you would only have the discussion with someone who also believes there's a transgenocide? happening and how best if you to- don't understand the seriousness the gravity of the situation right now i don't think i can have that conversation with you i feel like you know trying to and again i will say that you are splitting hairs about whether or not we should use the term genocide it's just not important okay it is a genocide using the and- word genocide is not important no, it's not important to sit here and and debate about whether or not, I'm not it, it is. About it. it is. One, no, I wasn't here to have a debate about that. I know at you all. weren't. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that it's effectively a genocide. You wanted to have a debate, or sorry, a discussion. I ra- rather about uh, uh, the effectiveness of using that term. But like, uh, but I'm telling no, you that. Yeah, I wanted. I wanted to have a discussion about how do we talk to conservatives about transgenocide. Right. How do we how can we talk to people who are not on our side in any way? Now, I understand you want to split hairs to say that I don't believe that there's a transgenocide happening because of X, Y, Z reason. I can give you and I have given you the reasons why I don't believe these things are happening. And you push back because your audience, you know, you want to talk to your audience who I'm assuming I pushed back because it's happening. Your point of view. I pushed back Uh, because there is a genocide happening. That's why I pushed back. I'm telling you, when I use the word genocide, I'm using it for my audience. You're correct. But that doesn't mean I don't believe it. There is a genocide happening. One thousand percent. I I, okay. I understand that you believe it. I don't care about that. I care about more talking about. I I don't want to necessarily talk to your audience, right? We're talking about how do we talk to conservatives? I'm assuming there's nobody watching ten the ten people here that I see. I don't know if you have YouTube going or not. Whatever. Nobody here is a conservative. Am I right in guessing that? I would guess not, unless I have hate lurkers. Okay. Um, I would love to talk to hate lurkers as well. <laughs> that's, that's you know, I go on Rob Norris streams and talk to him. It's great. Anyway, uh, but those are the people I want to talk to as well. Um, so I don't really care, necessarily care about talking to your audience about this. 
I want to talk to you because it, I, are, are you from Ohio? Yeah. Am I correct? Okay. So I'm assuming, I don't know if you're in the rural part or not, um, but no. I, okay. So I went for work. I travel all around the country and I work in facilities all the time as in manufacturing. I go and I do electrical work basically. And I do preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. And when I walk around with electricians or facility guys or maintenance managers, overwhelmingly, it's populated by older, white, conservative men. And these are the people who voted for Trump, who believe that, you know, COVID, I'm not sure about that. And I have to sit there and, and I spend hours with these guys, days with them sometimes. And I want to be able to have real conversations with these people because they are voters, number one. Number two, they are the ones who are, okay. it, uh, you know, most watching okay. Fox News. If, watching, if, I don't know uh, if your parents are conservatives in any way, but I want to have a conversation with you because I don't know if you have this kind of experience as well living in Ohio and living in a very conservative red state that – we need to be able to speak with these people in order to understand where they come from if, and have them understand where we're coming from as well. If you're talking to Johnny the Carpenter from down the street, you're not bringing up trans issues hardly at all. You're talking about their worker rights. That's what you're yeah. trying to convince them of. Well, okay. You're because there's no way well, that they right? even or, give two shits and a fuck about trans people. They probably don't even know who they are. You like, have no idea, though, right? Well, I, I don't. Like, you're right. They could have a trans uh, wife. I have no clue. You're right. But for the vast majority, I'm 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 hedging my bets because for the vast majority of working class, it's just they, even if they do know it's just, about it's just polarizing trans when you people. You say there's a trans genocide happening, and you're talking to Joe the carpenter down the street. No, I'm not. The guy's uh, going to say, "What are you talking about? There's no trans." I'm not a blue-haired SJW with my thick-rimmed glasses wobbling up to people and saying, "There's a trans genocide," and screaming at the top of my lungs. No, I'm not doing that. Wait, if I'm trying to say? convince. Joe the Carpenter, whatever you want to call him, from down the street, Jimmy the Carpenter, to vote Democrat, which is ultimately what we have to do right now, unfortunately, and to, uh, uh, and to effectively organize and push him left, you start with economics. You start with his job. You start with his groceries. You start with issues that affect him. Now, if he has a trans person in his life, then yeah, I would jump straight to the conservatives are trying to uh, genocide trans people. I, I would. Yeah. Well, so let me, okay, that guy is coming up to you and he, he makes a transphobic joke towards you. Is your, what's your, is your reaction uh, you just to let it happen or do you just walk away or do you say, have a conversation about it or do you just ignore it? Like this is someone, pretend, this is someone that you deal with on a semi-regular basis, let's say three times a week uh, or twice a week, you see him at the grocery store uh, and he's your bag, your bag boy guy, whatever. And you started to be friendly because okay. you see him all the time. Or oh, how about this? Someone at the gym. And then you start, you guys have conversations at the gym and you say, you know, talking about X, Y, Z things. And then he's, and then you notice that, yeah, he wants to talk to you about certain things. And you Usually, talk to him about economic you, stuff. You talk to him about, um, you know, hey, uh, maybe we should get vaccinated because, you know, the, the blah, 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 you know, you could go down that path. And then. He makes a transphobic joke towards someone that else that looks at the gym or, you know, someone else that, you know, works there or whatever. I'll Are probably just... say something like, that's not cool, man. Right. Like, I, we were having a good time, but like, I, you know, like, I, I don't really like that joke. I have trans people in my life I care about. So you shame them and, and just leave it there and just have that be the hard line and just leave it like that. I mean, that it would depend on his response. If he right. backs off and says, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I can maybe then ha maybe I have my foot in the door and I can explain yeah, okay. to this guy like, hey, I, I think you. you're cool. I, you. I like I, I like the same things that you like. And I would like to try to pull you over on this. You know, I, I think yeah. that well, trans I don't people think you cool. would go that far. Probably in the, at least if you put if he you know backs down, you're not gonna, you're not going to we'll say, hey, then let me talk to you about who. the trans genocide or anything like that. And look, I, I guess I made a mistake here because I really did think I could have a conversation with you about talking with conservatives about this these kind of issues. But if this is just for your audience, I, I mean, I guess we were just yeah, having we a already conversation. Are convinced you gave me a hypothetical things. and I answered. I understand. Um, but you're, you seem to be really stuck on me not believing 
that there's a transgenocide happening. Well, there there literally is one, and I just don't understand why you I don't believe you that. Keep saying but that. again, I've been sitting here listening to you, and I, like now you're you just seem to be backing off when I just answered your question. So I don't know what what the deal is. Okay, so how would you talk to your uncle, someone that let's say, I don't know? Do you have conservative members in your family? Y'all, oh, my entire freaking immediate and extended family is conservative. Did they? Huh? Did they take the vaccine? Uh, they, not they, enough they of them, no. Or? In fact, I think most of them did not. I, I, the only reason I ask is it seems to be like a really good shorthand to understand where people are because so many people. They're are- hardcore Trumpians. Gotcha. So how do you talk to them about trans issues? I don't. Okay. I, just, I just don't talk to them. Uh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay. Like when uh, it comes to my yeah. dad, I, I've tried to show him a picture or a video of like, um, I think the most that I ever did was I showed him a video of like a standard dad, right? There's like a guy who was up on a podium speaking about his trans daughter. And he was like trying to say, please don't take sports away from my daughter, et cetera, et cetera. And I showed that to my dad and my dad was like, you know, I think there are people who have that blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, but I don't think that's most people. And he still thinks that there's like a a social contagion or whatever. Like there reaches a point where it's just not worth my effort. I am much more, uh, I'm much better use elsewhere. Like I have other things to do with my time. I have better ways to help and I can't waste my time on one conservative at a time at this point. I just can't. If we were in more uh, lax well, circumstances, then maybe. That's a little bit more. Maybe it was like 2014. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But like right now, we are seeing a huge ramp up in uh, conservative action against trans people. And it's just not worth my time anymore. Okay. So, hmm. Damn, that sucks because that's just driving more and more of the polarization that we're seeing online. That Listen, more the more polarization, just, the polarization right now is the least of my concerns. I'm trying no, to tell my audience. One concern if we're trying I'm to trying to tell my audience. Issues. Listen, yeah, it's going to reach a breaking point. Anybody in your audience though. Your your audience I have is already a on your side. minute amount of power, a minutia of power with my with my platform with my audience. And you know what I did with it? I went to fuck, I called my ass over to Columbus and I spoke at the school board meeting where they gave me a platform to speak and I got three minutes to say whatever the fuck I wanted. And you know what? That boosted my popularity insanely, insanely. I still get messages from people who are like, oh my God, like, I cannot believe you did that. Still people, new people watching it. So that's how I'm using my time. I'm sorry if that's not enough for you. Well, I, oh, okay. <laughs> It's not about – you don't have to go to me. I'm just telling you what – I'm just saying, repeating what you just told me. I'm not here to judge you one way or the other. But you understand – speak to your audience. No, no, no. You're implying a lot of that, okay? I understand that there is polarization going on right now. I would love to be able to pull over my family, and I've tried, okay? It doesn't work at this point. It simply doesn't, especially with my dad, all right? It, 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 my dad is, is completely – uh, uh, knee deep in the in the Kool Aid. There's no saving him at this point. You know, I, I just can't. That sucks. That sucks. That he yeah, did. it does suck. You know, he's my dad. I would love to love him, and I would love him for me him to be fucking proud of me for all this. But he does. But he isn't. So whatever. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, uh, okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the reason why I bring up families because you know I'm I'm the same way you know I have conservative very conservative family members but you know I was able to have uh, I'm in North Carolina and we had a even though you know nobody really talked about our Senate race really it was between Ted Budd and Sherry Beasley and she would have been the first black female senator um, elected hot. and unfortunately she lost Tell but she didn't lose by many less points than three. and I was able to make it personal. And have a, a, my father, though he did not vote for Trump in the last election because he thinks he's an idiot for ego reasons, but he is a man that is very, I would say, racist and very conservative, libertarian minded. But he, even he voted for Sherry Beasley because he knew how much of a health benefit he would have uh, electing a senator that would pass strong legislation. To help my girlfriend, who's a type one diabetic, 
Um, I do guess. You, do you yeah. want to know where my dad's brain is at? Do you? Uh, sure. Yeah. He's a hardcore pro-lifer. He thinks that Democrats are killing babies after they're born. That's how hardcore this is. Right. He is not moving an inch. He will what not he vote want? Democrat to save his fucking life. Okay. He, he, he could be held at gunpoint and he wouldn't do it. That's what I'm dealing with. What is that's what a lot of people deal with. I know. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to be able to have a conversation about how we can approach these unapproachable people and say, hey, um, maybe we shouldn't be that polarized. Maybe At this you shouldn't point, be watching Ben Shapiro. It's too maybe late, man. Be- it's too late. We're, we're reaching a tipping point. I firmly believe, I believe that, that any i don't believe that for a second hold on. we're not near I, a civil war hold Absolutely on no 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 not. i'm not Absolutely saying a civil not. war you're putting words in my mouth i'm saying there's going to be an increase in violence the likes of which we saw at club q that's what i'm saying and i think you believe that as well hopefully I, and I and that's that not just because of t- targeted towards gay or trans people but i believe that targeted towards it's young white boys who are being <sighs> It's always a young people. Who are people. being led it's in the direction of targeting gay and trans people. Well, not just them, but their schoolmates and their families. Who do they always kill first? You know, what happened in Uvalde? What happened This in, guy didn't uh, kill his Parkland? dad first? Yeah, I think he... No, he killed his grand, grandmother. He was living with his grandmother. Uh, what happened in um, the Connecticut one with Alex Jones? She, he killed his mom. These people, these are young, white you know, middle class boys, and I call them boys because they're not men, even when they're older, they act like boys because they don't know how to engage with society. And the society is telling them that they're useless, that they need to, you know, you know, the Alex, you know, the Andrew Tate kind of ideology, the red pill, you know, they watch all that bullshit. I, I understand instead, that. Yeah, I, I understand. You You're understand preaching that. to the choir. But I, I, I talk, but then it doesn't help that you said there's a trans genocide when there's nothing happening. Well, I'm not matter. going to sit here and fucking lie to my audience. I'm t- I, I talk about this a lot. We need to have the doors open to people who are who are those disenfranchised young men who understand, who know, almost like they're in the Matrix, right? That there is a problem with society. And I honestly, I think that's why they called it the red pill. They they stole that moniker from the the fucking transes. Yeah, that is where it's, they got it from. It's they feel like they're in the matrix. They think they feel like something is wrong, you know. And I talk a lot, and you can ask my audience about pulling those guys over against uh, uh, against the wishes of some of my colleagues, mind you. Like they don't want anything to do with them. So I understand that part. You know what's but a great way to we, segue that? What? So, is to say, you know where the red pill comes from, the Matrix, and the writers of the Matrix are two trans women now. They, they, they're not going <laughs> to care, dude. They're not they, going to care. No, they will care. They, if you had to Those them, young white dudes? Absolutely. You, because if you start to break through and to understand where they're at, if you can meet them, you can pull them out of it. I That's know what I'm that. trying to say. I talk about that a lot. I don't think we disagree fundamentally on that. What I'm talking about mainly, the people that you're not going to get, first of all, it, 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 age is a factor, but at some points, they're just too deep. Like if they just believe what they believe because they believe that's the right thing to believe and that's it, and they don't have actually any other principles of like, this will help society, et cetera, et cetera, like you're, they're gone. They're gone to you. They're dead to you. Like at that point, they need, they would need to be institutionalized for anything to happen. Now, if they're before that point, if they're like, well, you know, I just feel like there's too much gay stuff going on and I feel like it's down my throat a lot of the time. And, you know, Jordan Peterson maybe has a good point And Ben Shapiro said this good thing. Then maybe you can still pull them over and you can say, hey, look, yeah, yeah I know you're right. You're you don't have a girlfriend. You know, uh, you're strapped with college debt. You don't have a whole lot going for you. You don't have any job prospects. That fucking sucks, dude. And guess what? I think that, too. I've had those issues, too. And you know what helped me? Yeah, all men do. You know what helped me, etc. You know, you pull them over to the left like that. Yeah, empathy. I think that's always a great starting point. I, you know, or sympathy. You know, try try to meet them where they are. Try to have them understand that. Uh, you know, these other people that you hate don't actually hate you. You know, women don't actually hate you because they're not choosing you. It's not because you you don't have a strong 
jawline and blah blah blah. I I I understand where you're coming from, and I think we do agree on so many things. Uh, obviously, the transgenocide uh, definition is not one of them, but I think we are very close, which is, you know, d- a degree of difference, I think, is a great place to be than to say that there's not one happening at all, uh, of course. But t- we do need to recognize and be vigilant of those legislations uh, passing all around the country. to But that legislation people. is directly indicative of a genocide. That's part of a broader effort. Is it passed? A, are these generous? Do, are you going are, to wait until they are to call it a genocide? No. <laughs> yes. Why? If we're talking about definitions. Yes. They are, you have to wait until things actually happen. I don't care about words. I care about more about actions. Uh, words are important to indicate our actions, but they're what's supremely more important are actions, not just words. People are uh, already being forced into the closet. I, I like that's part of a genocide. If you're being forced into the closet by your uh, by your betters, essentially by government officials, which that is happening in states. Okay, if that's happening, how do we prove that? You are, huh? How do you prove that? If they're how being do you forced prove that? The closet, you have people in schools who have to hide their identities. Uh, I believe in Texas now. Well, not even just in schools. They had to hide their identities completely. Period. Because there were caseworkers going and investigating parents of trans kids for the fact that they were trans. Okay? That's scary shit. That's genocidal shit. How do you prove if they're hiding? I, I, that's my question. That was my question. If they're hiding being trans, mm-hmm. I suppose they would have to tell you. But okay. I can guarantee you this. If you have a lower population of trans people in an area and you just so happen to have a higher proportion, a a higher um, level of legislation against trans people, there's probably a correlation there. I don't have the exact data on that. I I know you don't. And I, and you brought that up. That's why I'm asking a question, a follow-up question on it. So I'm not trying to, you know, yeah, that's going to be almost impossible. But there are policies already in place in these states that force trans people into the closet, like the one in Texas where they had investigations going on against parents of trans kids. I don't understand what part of this you're not getting. The preparation part. I I said that. That's not preparation anymore. That's enacting a genocide. I, I I don't think if you want to keep sticking on this question or, you know, this discussion point, you know, I did not prepare for this. I, I didn't want okay. to have a okay. whole debate about having a transgenocide question or not. Right. OK, uh, listen, I mean, listen, if you want to do that, that's fine. I can do that another time. I, I don't think you do, but maybe you do. I, I don't know. Listen, um, but my real question was talking about how do we talk to conservatives, because that, those are people that do have you know with the gerrymandering going on in this country i mean look at look at ohio ohio used to be a solid blue uh, blue dog uh, blue dog state uh that is completely laid waste now you have jd vance as a senator so a swing state it was it's not a swing state anymore it was but that's what um, i'm saying so you know you have an area where so because of gerrymandering and because so many uh conservatives stay in rural areas and so many people who are tend to be left are more highly educated and living in cities uh they concentrate more we need to have these conversations because this is a very real threat to our democracy if we do not compromise if here's we do how not you have do this sort yeah. of coming to the table of how do you have a conversation with someone that you believe and they believe are your mortal enemy? Yes, compromise left us out. Absolutely. That's what our country is. You can't built compromise on. with conservative that, it, politicians yes, at you this can. point. Not on with the politicians. And that, if you yes, have you can. with policy, followers, you absolutely can. Not with not with the politicians. If you have followers of those politicians that like fervent followers. That they are. Who do the politicians listen to? They listen to their base. If you can convince the base, then therefore no, they your don't. politicians. Conservative, will be no, no, no. Conser- you-, you have it backwards. Conservative politicians come up with a narrative and feed it to their base like they're like baby birds, dude. And so That's how leftists. that works. <laughs> Absolutely. Left- it's not no, just no, no, no. Leftists. Yes, yes, go from yes. The- <laughs> leftists go from the bottom up. 
leftists go with the needs of the people and then they try to push their I politicians hope you love the into boot that on direction. Your neck. I'm sorry, I got it. I got it. This is absolutely ridiculous. Are you serious? This is I'm like sort of stuff that's That's in what your chat. grassroots is. Do you know what a grassroots movement is? Putting a boot on someone's neck being grassroots? What, but a boot on someone's neck. I did not say that. And also, by the way, no, some politicians need that. Um, but I digress. I, I, metaphorically, of oh, course. Dude, that's Minecraft. a meme, right? But, Jesus but fucking I digress. Christ. Are what? you serious? Why are you getting so triggered, dude? Just calm down. We're just having it's a conversation. It's so funny to me that you hate the fact that you're you're over here saying that there's a trans genocide happening. And at the same time, you were saying that we should have boots on politicians' neck here in the United States. And then... As Is that not... Oh, my God. Listen, I was being metaphorical. Well, maybe they're being metaphorical, too. They don't actually hate trans They've people. demonstrated they're not. They don't actually think they're groomers. How do you know? <laughs> What do it's you about mean? trust. It's about building trust. We need to understand these people. Politicians should be, be bullied, dude. Us. I don't know what to tell you. They have to be. They work for us and they feel like they don't. So it's it's you, you got to push them a little bit. Grassroots movement is about pushing the most left, uh, the most progressive politicians either into office or the ones that are in office, pushing them to the we're left. Talking about Jimmy Dore? Is that what we're talking about? Forcing the vote? That no. bullshit? <laughs> Well, that was a grassroots, no. right? That's I, why I what does Jimmy Dore have to do that. with this? Yeah, that was a grassroots movement. And I would have, I, I, no, I would have loved to see Bernie Sanders in office. But unfortunately, the establishment Dems didn't want that. And they were too powerful that time. Okay. So are you, okay. Now we're going, now we're talking about just Democrats, right? Is that what you want to talk about now? I I can go there. I can talk about that as well. But I mean, it sounds like I don't even know how we got here. I'm telling I'm trying. I was was trying to tell you. Well, you seem to be getting upset when I said the people push the politicians in a certain direction. I think that's fine to do. Like, I I don't like pressuring politicians into enacting certain policies. Isn't that what leftism like? That's a big part of leftism, not what it's all about, but certainly a big part of it. Uh, Yeah, we do need to push uh the base in order to push the politician yes I, I agree with that but i don't believe that just politicians wholesale uh create their own narrative therefore they they can cut their own uh perfect base conservative you know, it's politicians not the chicken or egg. do this you know what simple do you know what um what is it called shit i can't think of it um manufactured consent is oh boy okay <laughs> All right, so we're going into some conspiracy stuff, huh? Where that's not. That's not a. Cons- this is Chomsky stuff, right? No. Why would? Why else would people vote against their own interest? I, see, okay. There's a lot of reasons why people vote against their own interest. Okay. Um, it could be the fact that how they were raised. It could be the fact that they're not educated. It could be for the fact that uh, they don't have time for it. It could be the fact that there's a billion of reasons why people don't vote for their own interests. Give me one second. I'm sorry. Yeah, good. Yeah, do your thing. I'll read how much chat hates me here. Not a comrade. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm not a comrade. Uh, shit lib. Proud to be a shit lib. Thank you. Thank you, new rap messiah. I'm definitely a chud. Also, ghost of Avalon. You'll like this chat. I'm getting the Pepe sandwich. <laughs> Okay, so um, I missed what you said last. Or no, I didn't miss it. I did hear it, but then I completely forgot it. Sorry, I was talking about there are tons of reasons why people vote against their own interests. Queen, I will be... uh, I already fucked myself earlier tonight. Thank you very much. But but that's all... The reason people would vote against what's best for them is because of manufactured consent. Either that or purposeful malicious uh, maliciousness, so. which I, I choose to believe it's the former and just ignorance and thinking that like, oh, the gay people is really the problem rather than the latter where it's like, I just hate well, it, gay people. I'm going to do this in spite of myself. I think we have more of the former. Well, I think, okay, if you're talking about gay people and the hatred of gay people, well, I can, I, or we can talk about any out group, right? Yeah, that's if part someone of is manu- not a part of the group, then it's easy to say hey uh what's the real problem illegal immigrants they're the problem it's not me it's not my uh word usage it's not what i'm doing with my life it's actually putting everything on them 
Um, just like how your chat just hates all conservatives. It's all about conservatives. Conservatives are the ones that are just. I tell country. my listen. Has, you know, I make my, this. My problem is polarization. My man. That's what I wanted to talk about here tonight. Really. Hold on. It's, my I tell my audience. I'm I'm very certain to specify when I say I hate conservatives. I mean that I hate conservative politicians. Okay. There are times when I don't make that quite as clear, and maybe I should. Granted, but conservative politicians, establishment conservatives, and the conservative pundits, by the way, Tucker Carlson's not a politician, but a pundit nonetheless. Oh, and he might as well be one for as, as fucking powerful as he is. These people are shitbags, nothing more. Okay. And we should treat them that way because they treat us that way. And we, we don't, we aren't at a point right now where we can be civil, where we can be kind and, and, and open the door for these people. No, we can't. Not yeah, Tucker, I, not I just, not Matt Walsh, not any of them. Fuck them. They're they're dirt bags. Why would we ever do that? Now, with their bases, sometimes it's a little different. When you have people, like I said, who are knee deep in the Kool Aid, it is very difficult to pull them over. Like my dad, for instance. But when you have somebody who's a fence sitter, somebody who may have been like me one day, who was like, oh, you know, this Jordan Peters guy, uh, Jordan Peterson guy, sounds pretty smart. Maybe I should listen to him. And and they're not quite at that level yet and you have a sit down with them, then you can pull them over. I'm not against, I'm a former conservative myself. I came from a conservative upbringing. I'm not against yeah, that, okay? I'm not against that. What I am against is this pie in the sky idea that we can somehow take somebody who literally believes that Democrats are eating babies and, and, and extracting their, their chemicals or whatever for their own uh, their own eternal youth, like their literal demons. Yeah. That person is done. They are, they are, their brain is a brick, okay? And, and there's no saving them at that point. Could someone argue, oh boy, this is not going to be good. Never mind, I'm not going to ask that question. Never mind. Go ahead, keep going. I'm, I was done with that point. Okay, okay. I, I see what you're saying, that, but I, I, I'm not 100% convinced. I, I understand where you're coming from. I do agree, people like Tucker Carlson... Uh, the Matt Walshes, the Ben Shapiro's, the people that I think you make YouTube videos about and dunk on them. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to do that because they're easy to targets, right? Because they're, it's it, especially coming from a leftist position like we do, where we can understand where they're wrong and we can point those things out. At the same time, they make the same videos about our side. They say make the same videos about Hassan so what? or Destiny or Vosh or you know any of these other leftist uh, Twitch poll. Uh, I, I don't the think streamers, they talk right? about Hassan very much at all. Actually, like they they hit on him sometimes, but I think that they don't want to start any shit with him because they know that Hassan just can be like, okay, debate me. <laughs> they don't want to do that. I doubt it. Hassan doesn't want to debate people. What are you talking? When's the last about? time you see anybody the Walker thing? He got rolled. When's the last time anybody on the um. Well, I, I, I know Hassan's not great at debate. He's not the best, but yeah. I do think that he could beat those conservatives. But when's the last time anybody even on the on the right even brought up Hassan? I don't even know when that is. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, exactly. Like they don't. On the they right, don't. but I'm sure it does happen. I'm sure. When you, I'm sorry. I'm no. sorry. I think I guess I'm getting a little. Uh, you know, I'm going up here and then down here and comparing the two. Of course, Ben Shapiro and I think Alex Jones maybe talked about Hassan once. Uh, but they're not going to be talking about Hassan because their platforms are vastly superior or uh, not superior. I'm talking about in numbers. No, so I, much I understand more where you're Hassan's. going with that. Yeah. And that's why I think there are plenty of uh, stupid. Uh, what was that guy? Like Coach Red Pill. And, you know, those avatar guys on YouTube, the, you know, the ones that uh, they always have like a stupid face, like a E. Oh man, a ca like a cartoon character, and then they—they're all conservative white guys. Or a lot of them from England, like a Sarkhan kind of a cod kind of level of uh, commentary, and it, they are the ones that are like dunking on Hassan. Of course, Hassan's not going to ever talk about them because they're super small. They, well, they can call it dunking all they want, but really, the easiest targets and the ones that they froth at the mouth over is the fucking TikTokers. Like they—they they pick out like sure. fifteen and sixteen-year-old TikTokers or a teacher if you're sure. libs of TikTok and want to literally kill people. And that's stuff is embarrassing. They'll, they'll, it is so cringe watching some of those. My God, I saw well, one. Fine, today. you can be like, cringe oh, all you want, but understand, understand but the conservatives. The you're, saying, you're talking about talking to your audience, and then you have a lib, you know, the, the libs of TikTok uh, account, which is like a horrible account. Uh, 
but all they do is just dunk on these stupid talking points. And then you have someone like your dad or someone like my dad or someone like Joe down the street going on Twitter and watching a Matt Walsh uh, or a Daily Wire article about the libs of TikTok getting deplatformed and doxxed and all this stuff. You know, that's not convincing anyone. My, my whole point of this, my whole point of this mm-hmm. is that polarization is not good. We need to cool the temperature down. That's my point. Dog, you to, sound like a centrist. I'm sorry. I am a centrist. Well, I'm proud oh, to be a centrist. Okay. I, okay. That, that clears a lot up. No, I, I listen. I, I'm I, asking some just, direct questions. No, I, ask me, ask me some direct questions about uh, political ideologies or a policy or anything like that. And t- you tell me uh, where do I stand if you want to do that. No, uh, okay. I, I wanted to address your point, but now I forget what your point was. What were you just saying? No, that polarization is disgusting. I, I really hate the fact that there is so much polarization. Listen, the internet libs, really- libs of TikTok and Matt Walsh directly uh, uh, led to a bomb threat made on a children's hospital. And you can see that reflected in search results for that hospital. As soon as they started talking about, well, they're mutilating kids. They're doing Nazi experiments on the kids at these hospitals. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to have a negative impact on this hospital. They got a bomb threat because of it. They had to shut down procedures because of it. All right, kids couldn't get their fucking surgeries on time. Like, that's mm-hmm. awful. That's stochastic terrorism. Yeah, stochastic We are dealing terrorism with good. monsters. I, think, I don't think saying that there's a transgenocide happening and inspiring people to get guns or to step on the necks of politicians is, I think that could also be classified as stochastic terrorism. What are you, against guns? I'm not against guns. Okay, then why should shouldn't I tell my audience yourself. to get some? Okay, but then you want to... What, what's your implication? Who are you getting the guns for? Defend yourself. De- against? Against people who might be fucking knocking down your door looking for trans people. Y- is that happening? I'm not going to wait until it starts happening to tell I them understand. to start I know. Co- I've heard this collecting from weapons well. to defend it's, themselds. It, that is, is that, just as... Ext- you're saying... We're the best way. To In fact, it kind of is happening. Also, is like, like they, a little bit of you can't well. even safely go to a gay bar anymore. What are you talking about? Like, I not without know. knowing, not 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 knowing for sure that you will be safe and that somebody won't bust in trying to kill everybody. I mean, you could say that about going to Walmart or to a movie theater. When okay, or going to your school. The last. What are you, what are you the, talking about? There is a much higher chance. That you get shot up at no, a, a queer bar in 2022 no, because of the rhetoric. There's no Walmart shopper. Like, libs of TikTok is not getting random Walmart shoppers. And that's my and point. That. Is that I think it'd be funnier if they did. And doing more polarization isn't a good thing. You're not seeing the through line. Matt Walsh, Libs of TikTok, Steven Crowder, anybody else who's in on this whole shebang is, t- is, is surgically targeting trans people and, and even broadly... Uh, queer people, right? Queer people. They're calling them groomers. They're calling them pedophiles. They're saying they're after your kids. They want to trans your kids. What do you think the response to that is going to be? If they feel like the politicians are not doing anything about them, it. that these are human beings, that these aren't groomers, that this isn't just a fad or whatever thing that they're. No, we need to be able and to you show can the human do side that. of us. You can do that. That's my that. point. But wow. by saying, oh, you should get a gun because they could be knocking down on your door. Dude, you can is- do you can do both, man. You can tell your audience to go get weapons to defend themselves. And organize around the community and find out who's an ally and who's not, while also oh, saying, hey, maybe it wouldn't be the worst idea if you got a Spencer to try to pull the them implication? over. Huh? Is your implication then that we uh, round up the ones that are not, are not allies, put them into an education camp or something? When did I say what, that? What, what, you did, um, that's why I said the word implication, right? I'm not implying that, no. No word did I imply that. I just think it's really hypocritical to to go and say one thing that this is bad, but let's copy it and do the exact same thing to them. I'm not that copying anything. Hypocritical. When did I say go shoot up a conservative bar? I didn't say that. I never said that you said that. My God. I'm saying. I'm saying that you're you're saying go defend yourself. Go get a gun. Here's the they're difference. Knocking, they're going to be knocking. Here's at the your difference. Door. Don't wait. Tell me the last gay person that went and 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 actually like 
shot up a place like a, that, that was full of straights or like the last time a black person grabbed a gun and shot up a place specifically targeting white people like that doesn't happen. You always it's always the same demographic of people committing these crimes because they're disenfranchised, young, usually white men who are getting fed this brain poison because they're the targets of this, right? The targets of that brain poison. And then they think it's their moral responsibility, their purpose, their moral duty to go out and cleanse this or whatever the fuck they say about it. You, That's how this what works. You're and that I does think, not work the oh opposite God, I way. I don't want to say this. I'm not going to say it. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Or at least if it does, it, it's not happening. We don't have like major leftists saying that like, you should go and, and like like the conservatives are after your uh, – well, the conservatives are kind of after your kids, so maybe not. It, you're just proven – I just hate it. Oh, I hate it so much. I just wish that – I know you do. Really just come it, to – It's going to be okay, buddy. I, I, I know. It would be just a better world if we didn't have – so many people that are just completely polarized that say I know. fuck centrism, that say fuck uh, uh, any sort of compromise, that fuck nuance. That's brain dead to me. I don't That's compromise with terrorists. Dead. Those people are lost. I do not you compromise with terrorism, terrorists. But it's disgusting to say that one side's terrorist and you're the freedom fighter. That's disgusting. They said themselves they're, dom they're domestic terrorists Based. several times. Fucking losers. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Um... Damn, I really thought we'd have a better conversation than this. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to be such a sticking point that... You, all right, just let, let me double-check everything. You're a socialist? Socialist. I, I call myself a leftist. It's pretty broad. Uh, in terms of economic plans, uh, wh where would you stand? Capitalism, free market? I would say 100%. that I would like to head in a socialist direction, eventually socialism, but I really don't know what entirely that would look like. It's kind of far off in the future considering we're under fascism or at least headed toward oh, fascism, I should say. Um, so, I, you know, that's kind of we're far in off. fascism? I, I didn't say we're Man. living in fascism. I, and if I, sorry, if I did say that, I meant we're headed toward fascism. Gotcha. Which okay. we are. <laughs> no, I, I you can laugh all you want. It's I mean. I, no, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not trying to be condescending or anything. I'm I'm really am laughing because I do think that's funny because I think it's just a funny thing to say. It's a funny thing to say that we're in fascism. We're heading towards it. I, we can say we're heading towards communism as well. I don't we? think fascism is uh, heading toward communism. Yeah, that's good. I don't no, think can, it's funny could, at all. Could we say that? No, you could. Could a conservative in, say that? I mean, I guess you could, but you'd be wrong. Okay. Can you prove those things? Can you prove it? I mean, just I, I mean, it, fascism. It's unprovable. Is about, That's my point. That huh? you can't prove that we're in heading towards fascism or not. It's just a good talking point. We it's are a good way. Matt to get Walsh your audience calls himself a fucking I, I theocratic that. fascist in his in his Twitter bio. Okay. Who? These people have a huge root in this country, and they are spreading this idea, this toxic ideology of. Uh, basically theocratic fascism and they're telling yeah. people listen you have to dogmatically believe in these religious ideals and vote in conservatives because they're the ones that are going to follow it you see crazier and crazier politicians getting elected okay trump i don't think he's a fascist i do think that he would he side with that. fascists and is siding with fascists but i don't yeah. think he himself is one now yeah. ron DeSantis, one thousand percent a fascist not even c questionable he is he he would laugh as he stomps on the brains of a 13 year old trans child like he he's disgusting and i hate him and he's a fascist and if he took power in this country you would like i mean he wanted people's political ideologies on a goddamn list like I, what more do you want from me yeah that is disgusting i and i completely see you're getting more and more you're understanding where i'm coming from more and more i think you're showing me actions that's important not just words and I, and that's what and that is really important that's why i don't think that it's we can say that we're in a trans genocide when we're not in it because of the actions are not there yet that's my point I just and i know you. that's a very important word yet it's a scary word but okay <laughs> let's go back to understand you're that. condescending me you can stop that i I, right. I explained earlier why we are in the midst of a genocide and you choose not to believe me you said that you need to study it more but you know, if you still want to sit here and say that we're definitively not in a genocide, that's fine. But pick one or the other.
you need to study it more. We're not or... in the transgenocide. I did say that. Yeah, I already okay, said yeah, I studied it. it. All right, all right but, the, but the important word words are very important, but they're not nearly as important as actions. I do completely agree that this, someone like DeSantis is more fascistic uh, than we've had a politician in a long time, other than like Woodrow Wilson or, you know, any of many American presidents that we've had. But at the same time, someone could say, you know, do you think that AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is she a communist? Would you consider her a communist? Would I consider her a communist? No, I wouldn't consider anybody yeah. who's currently sitting in office to be a communist. Right. I, and I agree with that. But can you understand that how someone says they're on their way to be a communist? Yeah, I do, because they're fucking morons. Okay. But <laughs> we need to prove those things. We need to have a conversation with those people. You don't have a conversation they, with somebody whose brain has been bricked. Okay? Actually, they have the blue screen of death flashing on their brain. How do you have a conversation with that person? We need to deprogram these people. That's my point. That's what we, we need to depolarize these people. That's okay. what I want to have a conversation about. Well, good How luck do we with do that. that? That's why I'm I want telling to talk you, to you. I, I have I a family you were full of them. I thought going to be the answer. Why, a, Alec? Please help. I have a family full of them. I've tried. I have tried and I've tried and it, it just simply does not work. Hey, Ruben. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, I, I, like, I, I don't know what else to tell you, man. I, I, okay. I, damn. I, I, I hate that. I really do. I'm sorry that, to hear that. Yeah. No, no. no. It, look, um, I appreciate your time. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go grab some dinner. Uh, I really enjoyed, I still really enjoyed this conversation, even though we definitely don't agree on things, but I love having good conversations. Uh, I hope I didn't, I know I came across as kind of sending at times. That's something I always have to work on. My tone is grating at times, but it's hard when I'm reading some things in your chat that just make me laugh. And I really didn't mean to insult you in any way. Um, and mm -hmm. I appreciate your time. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for the chat. All right. Catch you later. All right. Bye. Well, that was a thing that happened. <laughs>